fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Gun law ruled the range country in the early days of the western United States, and disputes over boundaries and water rights often led to range wars. It was the masked rider of the plains who put an end to them. He made the ranchers realize there was no justice in the law of force, and he blazed the trail for peace and security on the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young, and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. thirsty cattle were drinking at a pool, the only water for scores of miles, and a range burnt brown after a prolonged drought, and... Miss Lewis, just look at them critters lapping up. My, ain't they a-going at though? Keep an eye out for Joel Greer, Hank. Yes, ma'am, you bet I will. If that skunk shows up, I... Joel, do what? Joel. Watch him, Spade. I got him. Oh, oh, they will. You were watching from behind those rocks. You're mistaken, ma'am. We rode up from behind them rocks. We'd have been there when you come up with them cows. They'd never got near that water. Reckon you savvy you ain't put nothing over on me. Get them critters moving. I won't. They've got to have water. Not mine. But there ain't no other. There ain't a drop for miles. This is the only water hole that ain't dried up. Which same happens to belong to me. Now get them moving. Well, Miss Loomis... Looks like we'd better Hank, do... don't you move. Joel Greer, you can't do this. I don't care whose water hole it is. Them cows are dying for lack of it. In times like these, you can't deny the rest of us cattle owners the use of it. Is it the cattle you're worrying about or yourselves? What do you mean? If you really gave a hoot about them critters, you'd sell them to me. Then they'd be welcome to drink whenever they hanker to. I'd sell them for a fair price. I'll give you five dollars a head. Oh, they're worth 30 now. And when the railroad gets the branch line built, they'll be up to 40. Sure, maybe more. But them cows are going to get mighty thin before the railroad's here. Joel. Yeah? Joel, I'm just a woman. Just a woman that had to carry on when her brother died. Being a woman, I've always been for peace on the range. I wouldn't even let my punches carry guns if at times they weren't need for it in the course of their work. Well? But woman or not, I ain't going to stand for seeing my cows die of thirst. No, and I ain't going to sell at any such price as you just named. I'm not the only one to feel like that, Joel. There's Dave Walsh and the Logan brothers and Kurt Schaefer. There's the ranchers on the other side of the county line. There's all the folks that'll be wiped out if you don't come to terms. Only they won't be wiped out, Joel. Not of this sale. And not if you stop lead. Threats to blazes with you. Now get. 
You there, start hustling them critters. Hank takes his orders for me. He won't. Then we will. Spade, fire over them critters' heads. That'll arouse him. <laughs> right, boss. Just let him. Hey, what? my Stetson. Who shot my Stetson off? I did. Come on, fellow. Man. Why, you meddling fool. Outlaws. These cows stay here until they've had their fill. You but can't. you're leaving. Look here. Now. On your way. Hightail. You can't. Wait, wait. Come on, Spade. We'll meet again, mister. I won't dodge you. Get up. Get up. Come on, get up. Get up. That's Joel Greer, huh? Sure is, stranger. <laughs> and you sure upset him. Ah, that's a mighty fine-looking six-gun you're reloading there. Uh, I want to thank you. That's all right. But you shouldn't have done it. You've just made an enemy out of Joel just to help us that are strangers to you. Not entirely, Mrs. Loomis. You know my name. I've learned a lot about all the ranchers in this district since I heard of the drought here. Then you know what the situation is. I do. Since Cottonwood Creek dried up, this pool is the only water to be had. Well, this pool is spring-fed, I know it? that also. The fact may save your herds. I don't understand. You will later if Toto and I find what we've been looking for. Huh? What's that? You've been looking for something? What is it? Something that will make Joel Greer wish he'd been more neighborly. But That's you... all I can tell you now. Come on, Toto. Uh -huh. Who are you? We are not outlaws. I'll see you Come on, Come on. Joel Greer and Spade reined in at Joel's ranch house after their meeting with the masked man. Then... Oh, 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 oh. Spade, unsaddle and turn the horses into the corral. Sure, boss. Say, ain't that the banker's horse, eh? Never mind about that. With that other horse, boss. Whose is that? I said never mind. Uh-huh. And after you turn these critters into the corral, go on back to the bunkhouse and tell the boys to see to their guns. Maybe they'll be riding before long. Sure. Come along, then. Howdy, Mr. Squires. Mr. Greer, my time's valuable. You've kept me waiting. Couldn't be helped. Just came from the water hole. Uh, howdy, Kurt. Afternoon, Joe. Uh, <clears throat> One of your men came to the bank and said you wished to see me. Yeah. Thanks for getting here so soon. I suppose it's about that matter we discussed the other day. That's right. Then I'm sorry. My answer's the same. Huh? What's that? I can see your point. If you could buy it five dollars a head and sell it forty, you'd probably make a nice fortune. You ain't doubting it, are you? No, of course not. Unfortunately, however, even at five dollars a head, quite a considerable sum would be needed to purchase the stock you have in mind. It would mean buying herds now owned by a dozen ranches. Your bank's got cash enough to swing the deal, ain't it? Oh, certainly. But I wouldn't feel uh, justified in... Uh, well... I mean, uh, if your credit were better established, then perhaps a loan of that size... Say, could... ain't you told him, Kurt? <laughs> Thought I'd wait till you got here, Joel. Told me what? Maybe you don't feel like loaning me that much cash, Mr. Squires, but uh, you sure wouldn't turn down Kurt here, would you? But uh, I thought... I'm uh... back in Joel, Squires. But I was told you were one of the ranchers who'd been refused permission to use Mr. Greer's water. Squires? Uh, yes, Mr. Schaefer. Do you think you could be told something without blabbing it afterwards? If you think I'd violate a confidence... Now, you... now, you needn't get huffy. I take it that you won't talk, eh? Certainly not. Well, then, after you leave here, forget all about me and Joel being in on this deal together. As far as you know, I stand to lose just as much as the other cattlemen around here, and I'm just as mad at Joel because of it. Of course, of course. And here's a proposition. Joel told me you wouldn't loan him any cash by himself. Come to me, no, and I ain't again making a profit when it can be had. He's got the water hole, I got credit. We're thrown in together and splitting the profits 50-50. You, Squires, you'll be making a nice margin on a short-term note that's as good as gold. Savvy? Well, uh, with your signature on the note also, Mr. Shaver. You'll uh... be there, but that ain't to be blabbed neither. I understand perfectly. You see, Mr. Squires, Kurt's word goes a long ways with the other ranches. As long as they figure he's stuck just like they are, they'll listen to him if he advises selling at my price. But if they suspicion him and me was in cahoots... Oh, I see quite clearly. 
You can depend on my discretion. Then you'll uh, loan us the cash? It will be ready when you need it. I got a notion Joe will be needing it tonight. Yes? All the cattlemen have rounded up the herds, and they're bringing them here, mine among them. They got to act fast, whether they sell or whether they try to take over the water hole by force. Them cows have got to have water. I see. There'll be a meeting at the Loomis place this evening between me and Dave Walsh. I've already been talking to the cattlemen, advising them to sell. And there's a good half of them that figures that that's all they can do. I'm representing them, and Dave is representing the bunch that wants to fight it out. It's been agreed that however me and Dave decide it between ourselves, the others will agree to it. The money will be ready. And you, Joe. Yeah? You better see to it your water hole is close guarded. It'll be rushed if they see the chance. I've given orders from our man to be ready to fight. Then we've got everything in hand. And recollect this, both of you. I ain't been here. I ain't in on nothing, and I'm losing cash just like all the others. That's something you don't want to forget. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, your name will never be mentioned. That evening, while herds from all over the drought-stricken area were being driven toward the water hole, Kurt Schaefer met with Dave Walsh in the ranch house belonging to Mrs. Loomis. Dave said, Kurt, I can't figure you out. Ain't I made myself plain enough for you? Sure, sure. I heard you say you didn't think there ought to be bloodshed over this. But you never used to be so anxious to keep the peace. I can recollect the early days out here when you'd rather fight than eat. What in blazes has come over you? Dave, them times is over. The law's here now, and it's come to stay. Ah, the law. Never will be a time when guns won't come in handy, law or no law. Now's one of them. You ain't for fighting, are you, Mrs. Loomis? As a rule, I'm not. Yeah, you see, Dave? But she... this is one time I am. No, look, Wait. I... Kurt, the law says that water hole belongs to Joel Greer, and he can keep us from using it if he so wishes. Well, laws are made for justice. Only like everything else that's made a hard and fast rule, there's bound to be situations come up that the law never provided for. This is one of them. If there was plenty of water to be had on the range, then it'd be justice for Joel to keep his water for himself. But when there ain't no other to be had, then it's only justice for him to share it. Good for you, Miss Loomis. All right. Say you take the law in your own hands. Say you get that water in spite of Joel's guards. The fact remains you won't get it without killing some of his men. And when you're killed to take what you ain't no right to have, it's murder. Try and get out of that. I'll take my chances. And so will the men that said to do as I decided. Dave, you're a fool. I can't help... Dave! The last man! What the... Hey! Don't throw him. Lap leather and I shoot. Stranger, you'd Quiet. better... Dave, come here. What? I said come here. Are you... Hurry. What do you want with me? You learn that soon enough. Keep to the side. Don't get between my guns and curse. Wait! Dave won't be hurt. But listen... Him and me got to decide on something. Your decision will keep for half an hour. But I tell you... In 30 you... minutes, Dave will be back. All right, Dave, outside. Master, don't follow us. Why, the dirty... Stay here. Let that mask down me get away with this? He said Dave wouldn't be harmed, that he'd be back in half an hour. The word of a crook. But if you try to follow, Dave might be harmed. Stay here and wait. I don't feel Kurt Schaefer, knowing the importance of the decision that must be reached, waited impatiently. His eyes were fixed upon the clock, and when 30 minutes had passed, he started toward the door. It opened before he could reach it, and... Dave! Well, I'm back, folks. But where in blazes did that masked fella take you? What was his idea? What was he up to? He showed me where I was wrong. Huh? Wrong? About fighting over the water hole, I mean. Dave! You, you haven't changed your mind, have you? I have, Miss Loomis. You're selling? You're selling for five dollars a head? Yep. Oh, no, you can't. Miss Loomis, you promised to abide by our decision. I know, but... And if it... Dave says he's for selling, then we're agreed, and the decision's been made. Dave! That's the way it is, Miss Loomis. The masked man's to blame for this. Well... Uh... I thought he was on our side. <laughs> Please. Well, he's ruined us, that's what he's done. And I hope he recollects it till his dying day. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama, 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. When Joel Greer was informed that the ranchers had agreed to sell upon his terms, it did not take him long to summon banker squires and conclude the deal. Title to thousands of head of cattle changed hands that night. The following day, Joel watched from a distance as his men drove the herds to the water hole. Squires and Kurt Schaefer sat their mounts beside him and... <laughs> well, that's just about the last of them. How does it feel to own near all the cattle from around here, Joel? <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> well, the railroad gets here. There'll be no need then to bother with a trail herd to reach the market. For every critter we decide to sell, we'll pocket a profit of more than $30. <laughs> yeah, you figure that loan you made us is safe enough now, Mr. Squires? <laughs> I only wish every loan my bank made was half as safe. <laughs> but Joel's scheme, my credit, and your cash, Squires, would help put this deal across. But if it hadn't been for another fella, maybe we wouldn't have done so well. Hmm? What other fella? <laughs> the masked man. Yes? I don't quite understand. You don't? <laughs> How about me? First time I met up with him, I was mad enough to drill him on sight. I figured he was again me for sure. Now he switches sides, and, well, that'll be doggone what to make of it. I'd give a heap to know what he said to Dave Walsh last night. I can make a good guess. Yeah. He likely showed Dave the business end of them guns of his and told him to follow orders or else. But why? What you got to gain by it? None of us hired him. If you want the answer to that, I'd suggest that you ask him personally. Huh? Because if I'm not mistaken, that's him now. You're saying... My golly, Kurt, it is. Look over to the west. He's heading this way. Isn't that an Indian with him? Sure is. He was with the Redskin when I seen him before. Say. Huh? I got it. Got what? The reason for him siding with us. If you have, you got me beat. Why, shucks, it's plain enough. He's a gunman, ain't he? He figured that if he gave us a hand, it'd be worth paying him for. Now he's coming to see if he can collect. But... But what? But that don't make sense. If that's what he had in mind, why didn't he hire himself out to us before? Because he'd gotten bad with you before he found out we decided to pay him to be on. So he had sense enough to savvy he'd have to prove he was on our side before we trust him. Well, maybe you're Here right. Here he comes. Let him do the talking. Let's see what he's got to say. Mm -hmm. Hi, stranger. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, friend. Friend? Well, after last night... You'd better wait. You may find you made a mistake. Mistake? Last night, I persuaded Dave Walsh that he and the men he represented had better sell. <laughs> That's what I meant. You own these herds now, Joel. Thanks to you. Save your thanks. You own the cattle. But what would your position be if you found you no longer had water for them? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, a joke's a joke, stranger, but... A joke? Look towards that water hole. What did... Why, heaven? Hey, I wasn't noticing. What's wrong over there? There's something up. Ride over and see. You bet I will. Come along, Kurt. Right. Get up there. Get up. Come on. Get along there. Come Wait. on. Wait. Not you, Squire. But I... You're riding to town. Look here. Quiet. Tonto, uh, you ride to town with him. You have your instructions. See they carried out. Tonto, do that. You can't give me orders. You have no right to On tell your me. way. I don't... If you don't do as Tonto tells you, I'll attend to you myself. Get going. Uh, Take him along, Tonto. You come. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. You can't do this to me. Come on, Silver. See what Joel has to say. Come here, man. Come here. Come on, old fellow. I want to hold tied up. Oh, boy. Oh. Ranger, what do you know about this? Quite a bit. Spring ain't feeding the pool no more. I asked you what would happen if you didn't have water for your cattle. Then you knew this was going to happen. I did. But, but I don't savvy. That spring always flowed. I never heard tell of it stopping like this. As the first time for everything. But I you want to know why the pool is drying up? Of course I do. Then follow me. Where to? You'll learn that soon enough. Come on, Silver. Get up there. Get along. Get, Get along there. Oh, Silver, away! The Lone Ranger sent his great white stallion westward in the direction of the ranch owned by Mrs. Loomis, and Kurt and Joel followed him. As they neared the place, they saw a group of cattlemen standing near some freshly turned earth. 
Then suddenly Joe shouted. Water. They got water. What in thunder? Where in places is that water coming from? There's Dave. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 there. Oh, oh, oh. I thought the masked man would be bringing you along, too. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> you can see for yourself, can't you? Things are mighty different now, Joe. Now we got the water and you got the cattle. <laughs> Just yesterday, it was the other way around. But, but I don't know. Let's get this water. Suppose you ask the masked man. Well? Your pool is fed by an underground stream, Joe. Tonto and I spent more than a week trying to locate its course. Finally, we found it. You mean... I mean that the stream flowed here under land, owned by Mrs. Loomis. These men built this tank, blocked the stream. And now, while your pool is dry, Mrs. Loomis has water on land, which she owns. You can't get away with this. Hey, just a second. What this fella... What, what are you so head up about? Why, from the way you sound, the fellas think you were siding with Joe. Uh, no, what I meant was, uh, this, this just ain't legal. No. You bet it ain't. I don't know what you can do about it. I'll do a plenty. You there. Yes? This is how you persuaded Dave to sail. You showed him where you could steal my water. You figured that after I board, I just have to sail back again. You will. Yeah? Well, that's just where you're wrong. You're heading someplace, Joe? Never you mind where I'm heading. Just get this straight. You think you got me beat, but you'll soon find out you ain't. Get up there. Get up. <laughs> Guys, ain't Joe mad, though? <laughs> He's fit to be tired. Owns all the cattle in the district and ain't got a drop of water to give him. Joel hasn't given up. I don't know what he can do. He has gunmen, and he'll use them. Well, we're kind of handy with shooting irons ourselves. Perhaps this can be settled without a fight. Yeah. You'll follow my lead? Say, stranger, after what you've done up to now, you just name it, and we'll do it. Then get to the saddle, all of you. Well, uh, well, fellas, I, I reckon I'll be running along. You know my opinion on fighting. You'll stay with us, Kurt. Uh, but I... And I think before we're through, you'll find you'll have plenty to explain. All right, men. Follow me. Come on, Silver. Joel spurred his mount homeward, but it was evening when he reached his ranch. He sent Spade to round up his men, and when they had been gathered together, he addressed them in the bunkhouse. Now, if you men got it straight, we're riding down on them fellas with guns a-blazing. We're tearing down that tank they built and seeing to it that stream runs just like it did afore. Oh, oh, well, what's wrong? Boss, that tank's on land belonging to Miss Loomis. Well, what of it? Well, we don't mind fighting where we know the law's on our side, like guarding your pool. But this is different. What you want is us to grab something that ain't yours. Sure. Listen to me. If you fellas ain't yellow, then you're fools. In the first place, you're just as much inside the law doing this as the other. That underground stream has always fed that water hole of mine. Any court there is will back me up in that. It's what they call prior usage. And it means that stream can't be changed to keep me from getting the water I've always had. I don't know. And in the second place, if I don't get that water back, I'm ruined. I stand to make a fortune if I win. I lose everything I got if I don't. Do you think I'm going to just lay down? It's you that stands to profit by it, not us. Yes, sure. Wait till I finish. Boys, I'm giving each one of you that rides tonight a bonus of $500. 500? Now, that's talking. I could use something like that. Well, Leon, for 500 apiece, you bet we are, boss. Ain't that so, fellas? Yeah. That's just what we'll do. Huh? Oh, it's you, Kurt. What are they coming figuring on doing, huh? Come outside a second. I want to talk to you. Sure. Come on, fellas. You can saddle up. No, no. They're to stay where they are for a second. Huh? Well, what for? You know in just a second. All right. Stay here, boys. You're acting sort of funny, Kurt. What's up? Just step outside here and close the door. Sure. All right. Guard the windows. Don't let a man stir out of that bunkhouse. All right, Hey, right. what in places? Honest, Joel, I couldn't help it. They made me call you out. Just so they could trap my man. The first one of you that tries to leave the bunkhouse will stop lead. Tell them they're surrounded, Grim. I'll Quickly. tell them. Don't try to bust out, fellas. You won't have a chance. You blast Save it. No. We're going to have a showdown. That includes you, Kurt. Well, what have I got to do with it? You back, Joel, and he schemed to buy cattle for a fifth of its value. If it hadn't been for you, he could never put the scheme over. That ain't so. Oh, but it is so. Uh, listen to me, fellas. You know it ain't so, don't you? Why, I sold my cattle for the same price you did. I lost just as much as anybody. The masked man says different, Kurt. 
And from the way you've been behaving, I got a doggone good suspicion he's right. No, listen, the I The bank can... refused Joel alone until you put your name with Joel's on a note. You pretended to sell your cattle at the same price as the other men, just to convince them you were acting in good faith. You can't prove it. You can't prove a word of it. No? Tonto. You call me? Bring the banker here. Uh, you come. Um... Oh, Kurt, Joel, don't blame me. The Indian forced me. He said he'd shoot you talk. He didn't have to talk. Tonto made him bring the note with your signature on it from the bank. Hand it here, Tonto. Uh, here, no. Dave, take a look at that. Pass it around among the men. And that proves Kurt was in on it. Look at here, fellas. Kurt was just as bad as Joel was. Well, it was nothing against the law. You can't do nothing to me for it. The law won't punish you. It can't. But you and Joel are going to get a dose of your own medicine. Joel. Yeah? The situation is reversed. You have the cattle, but you haven't water. Either you sell those herds back to their original owners, or your cattle dies. But they ain't got no right to take that water. I'll go to the law about it and make them give it back. You're right. I believe a court of law would decide in your favor. Yeah, uh, you see? But these men have no intention of releasing that water until a court decision is handed down. That might take months. And in the meantime, what will happen to your cows? Uh, well, uh... You haven't a chance, Joel. Make terms and the water will be released. Hold out and you lose your cattle. While still being responsible for the loan that permitted you and Kurt to buy them. Uh, all right. Uh, I guess I ain't got no choice. You see it, don't you, Kurt? We got to sell. I reckon. So, uh, well, we'll let you have the cows back for, for just what I paid you. Sure, that'll be all. No, Dave. But I... They deserve punishment for what they've done. Give them $3 a head. And I paid you 5 the difference will be your profit and their punishment. Oh, no, no, please. <laughs> a doggone stranger. That's an idea. Yep, that's just what we'll do. You fellas all agreed? You just yeah. But it'll break us. We won't be able to pay off all our loan at the bank. And that means I lose, too. Which is just what all three of you got coming. Three dollars a head is what it is. And don't argue, because it won't do you no good. <laughs> Swindle us, will you? Well, next time you try it, You'd better make darn sure that mask on ain't around. Hello, Silver! Hello! Come on, Silver, old fellow! We're heading for Clay City! Hello, Silver! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.